Friday, March 10th, the end of the week, TGIF. Market analysis, this is Stan Ehrlich. Good morning, almost 10 o'clock, 9.54 California time, a little past the middle of the day. So we always start out with the stock market indexes and the spider in particular, the SPY, which has made another new low. Now new lows since January 9th, 19th, January 19th. This is below all of the support lines and moving averages. If you like the Russell uh, 2000 long-term Dow theorist investor type moving average and the neckline of the head and shoulder bottom. And at the moment we're trading at or a little below that neckline, plus we're below the long-term bear trend line of the 2022 bear market which all of these four different levels should have been, should be support. And so far, they're not holding. Not good. Bearish. Now, if you're bearish, that's good. So I am in the process of turning bearish. I have to say that. You can never make the market do what you want it to do. You always have to move with it. As much as I'd love to see that gigantic head and shoulder bottom work correctly, it is not. Therefore, <clears throat> we are running into a situation where I would, if we stay here or go a little lower, closing it to the end of the week today, I will not be surprised in the next couple of weeks to see this market drop below 380. And currently at 387, so that's actually 388. We're actually not that far away. Now that would be challenging the lows of the previously designated as a shoulder low, which is now fading into the background. That pattern is not working. <clears throat> I got to point out to you guys that back here in June, we had a low on June 17th, which was by itself the low of a small head and shoulder bottom with the shoulder being on May 20th and the last shoulder being on July 14th. A couple of months in size, about three, and it worked great. The neckline was fairly sharply downward slanted. That's that green dot dash line. It broke it and it just took off like a bat out of you know where. And it went up to its minimum upside objective plus a little bit more within a few weeks. Now, on October 13th, with a gigantic bullish engulfing ER buy signal, absolutely classic. And I think I'll remove, well, no, I won't. I'll expand the spacing here and I'll make this chart full screen for you. Come on, there we go. And you can see this October 13th gigantic green bar when it turns green because my code makes it turn green because it qualifies for all of the proper indications that it's a bottom, <clears throat> which it sure as heck was. But the point I'm trying to make here is, it was also the head of a small head and shoulder bottom by itself. There's the shoulder low, September 30th. The head is October 13th. And the last shoulder was October 21. It's a little smaller than the other one back in May, June, July. But this neckline was rel was more uh, modestly downward slanted, broke the neckline, popped up really nicely, came down, tested the neckline, absolutely classic price action from the standpoint of what the way head and shoulders are supposed to act, and went zooming right up to its minimum upside objective plus a little bit more. Then we came down into December for the last shoulder I was expecting for a very large, all the way from June, October's head and December's last shoulder low, head and shoulder bottom, which has been until now working. We broke the neckline back around January 
24th. Couple of days up, came down a little below the line, but popped up above it at the close, which could happen today. But at the moment, it's not. So I got to go with what I see at this point in time and then tell you what I expect if it does this or it does that. So we rallied very nicely up to a major historical resistance area, that red zone up there, got overbought, topped out, had a bearish engulfing, turned all the way back down to a little support area, tested the neckline pretty close a couple of times, and that was on February 24 and March 2nd, started to rally up for the end of last week, and on Monday, we topped out failing to close a small gap at 408, coming back down Tuesday and closing a very tiny gap, a little below the previous Friday's lows, started to work its way back up again Wednesday and Thursday and yesterday, Thursday, an outside down day. I said it usually is a bearish daily candlestick formation. And here we are, down 360 at the moment, relatively close to the lows, below the neckline, which is this line right here. I just put little white handles on it, and it's the dot dashed cyan line. We need to close above this line to keep the hope going that the head and shoulder bottom may, may, may still be good. It's got to, should stay at or above, and right now it's at that line. Very important. It's drawn across the highs that we had way back. Um, okay, comment. I'm sorry, I got my lines mixed up real quick. This cyan dot dash line is the previous major long-term bear trend line from the bear market of 2022. Uh, it is important, but the neckline is the green line here. I'm sorry. And that line has been crossed yesterday dramatically with that outside down day, a new low, a new low close below previous lows for a couple of months. Not good. That pretty much kills the head and shoulder bottom. And here we are breaking another line that could have and may still support prices a bit. We really uh, have killed it. The head and shoulder bottom is now dead. Sorry to say, what's next? We're getting close to overbought, sold, oversold. In fact, we're extremely close to oversold. My oversold levels are 25, not the standard Wells Wilder RSI 30. <coughs> I learned RSI from Wells himself back in the 70s and 80s. And um, I've adjusted it to my personal preferences. Oversold is 25, not 30. And it is at any point during the day, not the closing. So, We've just barely touched it. And if we start making new lows today, we will be getting into the oversold territory, implying the market's about to rally some, not necessarily a bottom of any particular consequence, but at least a bounce of some sort, which wouldn't really change the picture. So it gets a little complicated right here. I'm turning bearish. I have to. Uh, the next... Bounce or no bounce, the next move down is probably going to be down to around 383 and a half ish. That is the trading range for the previous last shoulder trading area back in December, uh, which we just are going to call now a low in a trading range of a few weeks. And I'm going to start racing some of these um, markers that I've got to designate the parts of the head and shoulder because it's it didn't work. It's not working. And now we're sinking again. All right, all right, all right. So DIA is even more bearish, but it's getting oversold today. It's not very oversold, but it is and was oversold at its low and we're almost at the low. Now, like some of the other indexes, there's definitely some support levels on the way down. We're probably going to bounce off of some of them. And when you're oversold, there's a much more uh, likely bounce coming very soon. 
Um, I heavily weight the RSI overbought and oversold conditions with my analysis, and I use the bullish or bearish engulfing as well, <clears throat> along with support and resistance and a variety of other tools I've learned over a half a century of being in this business. Okay, so although we're going to go a little lower probably, we're very close to bouncing probably a little above where we are at the moment, and that would be early next week, and then down some more. There's a lot of overhead resistance now. We failed to hold support the second day, but eh, oversold means some bounce. So if you're interested in going short, wait. Probably going to get a better short sale in the ballpark of 325 for the DIA early next week. All right, let's look at the QQQs. And they have a chance of hanging on. But look, I mean, if the other indexes are going to head Tierra del Fuego, which is slang for head south, uh, southern tip of South America, and I expect this low on March 2nd to be broken. And then we're going to hit some of these other support levels on the way down on the QQQs. It also had a head and shoulder bottom, which not quite yet has been destroyed. The neckline is still quite a bit lower because of the slant of the pattern. But at a minimum, I expect it to come down and test that heavy blue line down here at 271-ish. At least that's the level it's at today. But remember, it slants downward, so every day it gets a little bit lower. And that may take a week or two, maybe even three. Well, that's it. But hey, futures markets, we got some new stuff today. We have, look what's happening here in the precious metals. Silver's got a brand new bullish engulfing ER buy signal, period. I keep mentioning that sometimes these things cluster with two or three or even four within approximately a month. And here we are with the third bullish engulfing. The other two did produce minor rallies for a day or two for the way my system works. And it's 100% automated. You can adjust the inputs to make it work faster or slower, but the automation is in place. You should not do anything, but watch. If you don't like the speed at which it's moving, there's adjustments you, that you can make. This is the third bullish engulfing. Third time's the charm? Well, I don't know, maybe. Uh, it's a pretty big bullish engulfing as well, and it was oversold, so <clears throat> it's looking awfully good to me. Um, this rally could easily carry up to uh, 22, uh, and I'm not ruling out 23. So I like the way this looks on silver. Let's look at the next one. And that would be platinum. We had a bullish engulfing on February 27th. And now all of a sudden, for the last four days, approximately the same lows. And we popped up really nicely today. A new high and a new high close for the last few days look heavily likely. <coughs> and I am expecting to see the market take out this last rally high. <clears throat> pardon me, at the beginning of this week. So 987.16 is good, probably going to go bye-bye real soon. And <clears throat> I would frankly expect to move back up to, say, um, 1,050, something in that ballpark. It's not very clear to me how much further up it could go. Mind you, we did catch the top of the market. That was a great sell signal up there. We had some very, very good sell signals also way back here in October last year, of course, and September and also in August and a pretty darn good buy signal back in September 7th. Now, the system is geared, built to pick the highest high and lowest low for major intermediate to long term bull and bear market turning points to the damn day. It doesn't always do that. What I end up with is sometimes short-term, very good profitable on a short-term basis, turning points. I, often enough, 
these red and green bars, which are my ER buy and sell signals, greens buy and red sell, of course, are major turning points. Next chart. <clears throat> we, pop, we picked the top of the gold market for months prior and since February 2nd. But looky here, we also picked the low a couple of weeks ago. We never made a lower low on this dip down. And now all of a sudden in a day and a half, two days, <clears throat> we have a new high since the buy signal. Nice. What about bonds? Unfortunately, I didn't get a buy signal at the bottom of the break. I told you I was expecting an intermediate to long-term base building activity to develop with 10-year notes and bonds. Today, we shot up dramatically. I think we may have hit limit up, but we're close, and we're holding uh, a lot of the gains and not giving it back. I like the way this looks. This is emphasizing that the market, the bond market, and probably 10-year notes are both in the process, I believe, of making long-term bottoms. We had a buy signal, didn't work, period. So we took a small loss. We never take, well, our stops are in place to take small losses. We always have an, a stop in immediately upon getting into a trade with the ER signal trading system. Now, 10-year notes, I believe. Yep, that's 10-year notes. Shot up just like the bond market dramatically today. This is new highs since February 14th. Um, that's almost a full month. We did get very oversold. I told you that this market was cruising for a rally. And here it is, starting yesterday and really following through today. Great. I'm looking for long-term bottom formation developing I think we could rally back up to, oh, probably 15, maybe 16 in the next day or two and challenge those highs back in uh, January. Next chart. Corn. I've been telling you that since this market broke down on February 23, that it looked like it was going to start to break major long-term support. And it did. And it got oversold in the process. We bounced a modest amount, very small, actually, a little less than I would have expected. And boom, in the last couple of days, we have seen new lows for the move. Now, I have to say again, just like I was talking about since February 24, 27, 28, and 29, or March, that is, first, that now we are significantly oversold again, obviously at much lower levels. So we're going to bounce again. And I think it's going to be back up to about 632, 33, where there should be, could be, I'm looking for a new short sale signal, hopefully a bearish engulfing ER sell signal. But I think we're going to about to bounce. In fact, a lower low today with a slightly higher current quote looks like it might be in progress. The start the bounce may have started and it could be today. The lows not particularly important from a historical standpoint, a little bit of support, nothing great. This is a bear market. Next is natural gas. We picked the bottom of the market in natural gas to the exact day with our ER buy signal, green, February 22nd. So far, a very nice rally. And during this week, we've eased off slowly, which is not uncommon, so I'm expecting next week, the beginnings of a rally to make new highs for the move that would be above 3.0 and up some more, maybe quite a bit, maybe up to five. That would not surprise me. That's quite a bit, but I think that's a possibility. All right, next chart. And that was natural gas, the E-mini, ugh, dropping down way below the neckline. New lows since January 6th. Um, I'm expecting it to challenge the lows that we made in December, as I said about the spider. <clears throat> and this is killing the head and shoulder bottom formation. Pretty much dead. Next. Sideways trading range and the crude oil. Since the trend is down and we've gone sideways for three months, I think this market's about to crash. 
substantially and a lot and break into new low ground uh, very fast and furiously. Big downside breakout coming soon. I think maybe next week. I'm watching very closely to see what happens here. But that's my expectation over a substantial amount of time. In fact, since we've got the top of the market with a bearish engulfing ER sell signal on June 14th of 22, this has been in a bear trend. Higher, um, lower highs and lower lows over time. Not for a little while. So it's cruising for another bruising on the downside. Next, we've got heating oil. Now, today, there's a bullish engulfing, it looks like, but it's not oversold. Came pretty close, pretty, came pretty close. So I'm not going to get a green buy signal, but it looks like it wants to rally a little bit more, maybe up to 29, 2.9200, give or take a little, and that would be early next week. And then I expect it to, I think it's going to break that first green support line and maybe in the same day, wham, break the second one or very shortly thereafter. And that would be a huge downside, major long-term bearish breakout on heating oil. And that is what I expect. I think I can say next week. Next, we got bean oil. We started a breakdown yesterday. I pointed this out to you guys. We started to break down again through another support line today. Although it's a tiny bit above the line at the moment, the damage has been done. We broke the line. It's got a big crack in it now, so to speak. And even if it closes un, uh, where it is now, slightly above the line, or even slightly higher on the day, I don't think that's going to save it. We are oversold, so there's a little bit greater likelihood that we might bounce a little bit short term. But soon, very soon, today's lows are going to go bye-bye, and we should see it continue to trend lower. Next chart, <clears throat> live hogs. I'm going to pass on Miss Piggy and OJ, pennant formation maybe, wheat, too oversold to go short, looking for a buy. Cattle, pass on that. In fact, I'm going to skip the rest of the futures. There's nothing that I want to talk about there. Sectors. We had yesterday for the um, materials sector, that would be XLB. And that was right there, a new bearish engulfing sell signal. Now, <clears throat> it wasn't overbought on that same day, but I do allow it to be overbought within a certain number of days in the past and still be a good ER sell signal. And look what's happening today. Slam dunk. We're down below a uh, previous buy signal that worked pretty good uh, for a couple for a week and a half. That was a nice rally from that low. But now that's broken. And all of the attempts to trend higher failed. And here we are challenging the lows for the trading range that started way back in November. I think this market is going to head south a lot. Um, I think that the support level at 76.80 is going to go bye-bye next week. But we are getting close to oversold. So maybe we'll bounce from a minor low next week and it'll take a couple of weeks to make new lows. But I'm bearish, expecting to see new lows fairly soon. And I'm going to go up to KBE <clears throat> because... Look at this. That is gigantic. Two huge down days into extremely oversold conditions, uh, down to a six and a half RSI for a sector, for an index. That is very oversold. This is about to bottom out. This is about to start to run back up again to probably 4370 area. Maybe a little bit lower, but in the, in the, yeah, a little bit above 43 to 44. That would work for me. And it'll happen next week. How about the next one? Same thing, by the way. And you should know this is the banking sector, S&P banking ETF. So XLF is also financial spider. Look at how much it's crashed here in the last two days. 
I think it's because of interest rates and look what happened to bonds and 10 year notes today. Those charts went up, meaning rates going down, meaning the earnings for banks and so on, financial institutions in general are gonna be hurt a little bit. And that's probably why these two sectors have hit the dust. Now, I'm not much of a fundamentalist, oops, sorry, fundamentalist. So take it with a grain of salt when I try to interpret fundamentals. But that makes sense to me. Um, oversold, don't run after this, probably going to rally next week, and that will be a much better short sale. Next. And XME <clears throat> is the next one I want to talk about. New lows for months, a couple of months, and it looks like it's starting a much more serious decline. We, we attempted to make, and did by a very small amount, new highs only at the beginning of this week and got overbought after a bullish engulfing buy signal, ER buy signal that worked for one day. Now that's plenty of time to make some money with my system. It's not unfortunately a gigantic turning point long-term, which don't always happen at the turning points, but sometimes yes, they do. And that's again, why I developed this trading system. And I'm going to go to OI, OIH, sector which is uh oil services and it's coming down and remember i talked about major downside breakouts in the energies so that makes sense so i think this is about to make new lows and start to break down a lot more now we're kind of close to oversold but not quite so there's elbow room to come down to maybe be 280 real fast or in the low to uh, middle 280s low 280s next week early and i'm going to leave you with that but i have to comment today about forex the euro dollar <clears throat> here we go had two buy signals only a couple of weeks ago those lows were challenged wednesday of this week but we never closed below those lows and now a double bottom seems to be forming and we are almost breaking out of that double bottom today Rallying above today's high on a closing basis should put in place a short-term bottom, which would move the market up to, I think, 109 to 110, challenging the highs that we saw back in late January when it got overbought, actually February 2nd to the top. So I'm turning friendly short-term and getting reinforcement with this particular rally today. You're going to see the exact opposite on the dollar index in a moment or you should and here we go and here comes the colors sell signal didn't work did make a new high but now all of a sudden in two days we're making lower lows in the last couple of weeks so looks like this is having trouble i do expect this to drop down some probably down to 101.6 ish and taking a week or two to do it and next is going to be the Aussie to the U.S. dollar, the Australian down to the U.S. dollar. We have a brand new bullish engulfing buy signal today. Now, this is Forex, and it's a very little bit, a very minor amount higher on the day right now, up uh, 48 pips. So it could turn down and be below yesterday's close, in which case, we will lose the green bullish engulfing and it will not be an official buy signal. It has to stay above yesterday's close in order to be an ER buy signal and stay green. So I will be looking at this on Monday to see if it stayed green or not. <clears throat> uh, dollar to the yen. I don't think there's anything going on there at the moment, except it's breaking pretty good after being overbought. U.S. to the Canadian overbought. Don't chase this up. I'm looking for it to start coming down. Dollar to the Swiss franc, um, no particular comment. And lastly, the Euro dollar to the British pound and sideways movement, boring, big sideways trading range. I'm gonna leave you with that one. Have a great weekend, profitable trading to you. Email me at info at ersignals.com. Profitable trading to you.